Well, good morning and welcome to Daylight with Dean number 659 on May 13th, 2020. Uh, only seven remain, including this one, till we reach 365 and I sign off from Daylight. So I'm grateful that you're here with me this morning. Um, very grateful. Let's begin in our usual and customary fashion with an amazing, spectacular, well-deserved, lovely, can't wait for it, eye-opening sip of coffee. Good. I just remembered something I wanted to show you, so I'm going to uh, go get it, and I'll be right back, because Leslie's family has this tradition of playing this board game, and this is a board game that they played growing up, and then, oh, I don't know, 14 years ago, <laughs> maybe longer, Leslie's brother bought one off of eBay and we've been playing it ever since and it's the kind of board game that you just look forward to every time you're together with the siblings and it's just simply called hit the beach <clears throat> it is a Milton Bradley game created in I believe 1966 or 1965 and it is a World War II um, retake uh, Europe invasion kind of <laughs> board game. And it is the simplest, silliest, uh, outdated game you'd ever want to play. However, we have so much fun playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> that it's just hard to describe uh, because four players play and each have to get their um, military jet and ship in position to take a beachhead and you have to do that twice and then you have to uh, capture the uh, prize right in the middle and there's one die that you roll and it's uh it's if you if you work with somebody with your partner not partner you don't have partner but if you work the person on your side of the half of the board sometimes it goes a little bit better than if you just try to ruthlessly eliminate your competition and and anyways we played last night with leslie and her brother jim and her brother glenn and I played and Leslie won. She wanted to play so bad and she trounced us um, and was a whole lot of fun. Um, and <laughs> when I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you this morning, it, uh, it didn't cross my mind till after I came on daylight that uh, this is a part of Leslie's family that is hard to, um, hard to, uh, imagine her family without that so hit the beach is um is a will go down in hetrick lore as just the best uh, and it's usually like vacation worthy only <laughs> so uh, i just snorted on daylight there you go um so we had a lot of fun playing that last night I didn't, uh, I didn't mention to you or didn't show you uh, yesterday. We went to DeLello's for Doug's birthday on Tuesday and we bought DeLello's brand Pizzelles and um, they're really good. We get the vanilla, um, but Carol kept talking about them and talking about them. And so when we got 
uh, there. We bought them and they have not disappointed. And um, you can buy them on Amazon for like $18 a box. And then uh, you pay shipping with that as well, she said. Um, I'm not sure why I thought Amazon was free shipping, but anyways. Um, or you can buy them at Delelos. I think there's an, I think you can find them every once in a while at other grocery stores, but, um, that was a nice, uh, nice addition. And yes, we brought home our Talonica bread and have been enjoying that, um, as well. And then the, um, uh, <laughs> um, so the uh, espresso maker. <laughs> this was very funny. So Leslie and Jim got the espr the new espresso maker out because the old espresso maker that I just bought the brand new one I bought for Mother's Day, which they could not get working. They followed the directions to the T, could not getting working, get it working. They were very frustrated, and so. I went and exchanged it for the last remaining one, brought it home, and yesterday they tried it as well. Well, um, sometime before lunch, they were very just perplexed why they couldn't get this one working. They followed the directions to the T. They followed the instructions to the T. They couldn't figure it out. And so um, my... So I decided instead of taking it back, why don't I try to fiddle with it as well? And so I turned the on button, I pushed buttons, I pushed buttons and couldn't get it to work, couldn't get it to work. And, and uh, so then my brother-in-law came in and he's like, well, here's the frustrating part. And, you know, if you follow this instructions completely and he kind of laid it out and, and uh, so we were following it to the letter of the law and it just would not it just would not bring the water through. And so um, he said, unless we should let it cool down and unless we turn it on and as soon as we hit the red button to, to engage it, we hit the, we hit the, um, We hit the espresso button as soon as we hit that. And if we do that, perhaps, because we were waiting till the water was fully heated and then we hit it, but the way the instructions were working, read, that's how it was said to do it. But perhaps if we read the instructions a little differently, because they put this notation in here that interrupts us, one thing to note, and that makes us mess up the chronology a bit, perhaps, we let it cool down and we'll, I said, okay. So I came in uh, the kitchen uh, right after lunch and uh, he was in there and I said, well, let's try it. So we turned it on and then hit the power on and then hit the espresso button immediately before the water heated up and it started coming out and Jim was so happy and so excited and it was like the highlight of the day, okay? So now, uh, Mark and I have an appointment to work on a sermon all afternoon yesterday and with a house full of people, there's just no place to do that. So I went and sat on the front porch, which was quite breezy and cool. Had a blanket, I was all wrapped up like Nanu of the North but sat on the front porch and Zoomed for a couple hours working on the message with him. And um, so then when that was all done, I came in and Leslie and Jim were like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. This, so, this espresso is fantastic. And I'm like, you've had a little, huh? Yes, we're on our third cup and it's great. <laughs> it was... So funny how uh, hopped up on espresso they were. 
with their new espresso maker. So um, if you run across an espresso maker at Aldi and you want to try it and it's marked down, Leslie said at $49, it was a great price, but it was even $79 worthy if we had to pay full price for it. So uh, that was uh, grateful to grateful to see that they got it working. <laughs> um, so. Well, guys, working on the sermon uh, yesterday, uh, spent quite a bit of time going through the passage in um, First Peter. Um, First Peter chapter four, I'm trying to pull it up here. Um, hmm. Verse 12, we, we ended the sermon last week on verse 11, or verse 12 kind of kicks it off. And Peter says, dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. <laughs> we, we love that. We love that phrase, like how confused we get whenever we face uh, suffering or trials, um, how it just knocks the wind of, out of us like something strange is happening to us. And um, so then chapter five continues as Peter, an elder in the church, is writing to other elders, other church leaders about how they should interact and, and teach and lead and shepherd, um, very clear instructions about shepherding um, those that come under your uh, care as a pastor. And, um, you know, I realized in a clearer way uh, how much First Peter is written kind of to Peter himself. Like last week we talked about how um, when he says, be alert, be sober, and, uh, and pray so that you will be able to pray, how that echoes Jesus' words to Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane and how Jesus wanted them to stay alert, stay awake, and pray with him in his final hours and how they just couldn't do it. And then... Um, um, you know, we couldn't figure out why Peter kept coming back to the same theme of humbling yourself and not being proud. And he just kept coming back to it. And then, I, then it hit me. It's like, wait, he's preaching to himself. He's preaching to himself. And we get uh, an inside look. And, you know, he's talking about shepherding and all this focus on shepherding those that come under your care as a as a elder or as a pastor and you know when Jesus restored Peter after his betrayal and deny or not betrayal after his denial um, Jesus said to Peter on three different occasions um, you know do you love me or same occasion three different times do you love me and Jesus when Peter answered each time Jesus said well then feed my sheep feed my sheep feed my sheep and um, Peter is now instructing us as shepherds, as teachers, as pastors to, um, um, it says, be shepherds of God's flock that, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. I love that. Eager to serve, eager to help, eager to bless, eager to serve. Not lording it over. Have you ever known a pastor who used his position to 
make sure you knew that he was in charge and you are not. <laughs> not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. And then, um, I think I'm going to leave the other, um, seven verses for us tomorrow. Um, cause there's just, there's just a lot of good stuff in there. So, um, all right guys, well, it is, uh, time to head up to the gym, out to the gym, down to the gym. <laughs> It's upper body day today. I've been warned by Gary that it's a whole new upper body workout, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, don't tell him I said this, but uh, Monday's upper body workout was one of the uh, least challenging ones we've had simply because each of the three, first three um, groupings of exercises only had two exercises each and they usually have three. And so we just flew through that real quick. And so looking forward to what's in store today for the upper body uh, workout. And uh, so I'm gonna get going to that. Um, great to be with you. Uh, grateful for this time. And may I pray for us now. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to share this time together. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the words that you inspired Peter to write um, just about how we engage and interact with others and those that come under our watchful eye and our care. Thank you for your example of service and serving and the way we are called to serve and bless and help. And may we live that and may we do that well. Uh, God, thank you so much for this day, this Thursday that we get to um, experience all that's ahead. Father, I pray that you'd watch over and bless each person. And... Um, Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. We're so grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, everybody. Great to be with you. And cannot wait till I get to see you again. Bye.